Okay guys, tonight's the night we go and pick up Stryker from the airport. And what I wanted to do was go through a little couple little tips that will make this process a little bit easier for you guys when you go there tonight. So, um, a lot of these videos that I'm going to put together for you guys are going to be geared toward trying to keep you ahead of the game. So you can anticipate problems before they arise. I think one of the most important things we can do when it comes to training our dogs or teaching them how to be with us and behave with us is anticipating future behavior so we can prevent it from happening. And, and, and if I can have you guys get really good at that, especially the people who are inexperienced at this, it's going to make a world of difference in, in how you interact with your dogs if you can anticipate, again, things that are very common that we might not think about. So whether or not you're going to pick up your breeder or your dog from your breeder or you're going to pick up the dog from the airport, these tips can help you in both situations. This video is geared obviously toward going to the airport because that's what we're doing tonight. So Stryker is supposed to get in tonight about 9 30, 10 o'clock without delays. So um, it's a couple hours from now, but I'm already anticipating the things that I'm going to need to bring to make that process easier. My wife and my children are coming with me, so it's not just me. There's going to be other things going on. So again, being prepared, having the right tools is going to take some of the stress out of all the excitement that we might have uh, during that process. Okay, so typically when dogs travel a long distance and Stryker is coming from the East Coast, he's having a layover in Denver and then he's flying up to Billings. So he's going to be in that crate if nobody's let him out for like seven to eight hours. So there's, there's a chance that he could make a mess in his kennel. Now, anybody with a heart that's behind the scenes might take him out and give him a chance to potty, but I'm not really sure on airport policy or on airline policy. So my assumption is that he's going to be in there the entire time, which could be stressful. And again, we could be anticipating a mess. So first and foremost, this, the essentials, he's gonna be hungry. Okay, and he's probably going to need some water. He is required to travel with both, but again, if it spills, if he's already eaten, if he's drank at all, he might need that when he gets out. So first thing I'm going to bring is just a little bowl. Okay, I love stainless steel bowls. I'm not big into plastic, things that dogs can chew on. I always use, even with my adult dogs, stainless steel bowls. Okay, the other thing I'm going to bring, small bag of dog food. Even though he's required to travel with some, typically when I pick a dog up from the airport, there are actually some food taped to the crate. Um, and so I would recommend making sure you bring some just in case there isn't any, okay? It's a great way too to kind of first lure them out of the kennel if they don't want to come out or feed them a little bit to get them to know you a little bit and just kind of try to help make them more comfortable, okay? Uh, the other thing obviously with food comes water. So bring some water for the dog have a leash, okay? You're gonna need one of these. Without a leash, you're gonna not have a way to control him. Now, granted, I, I, you're probably gonna be carrying him. We will probably be carrying him a little bit tonight just because it's gonna be cold, but having a leash. Now, again, you're gonna find out through these training videos, I'm not a huge fan of retractable leashes, but there are certain situations where they can be very handy. This is one of them. I'm gonna want him to be able to stretch out and move away from me and go to the bathroom and get on the grass and do that kind of thing. So a retractable leash for this type of situation is a really good choice, okay? Having some sort of flat collar or buckle collar, okay? Using something that is for a puppy, but it's also the appropriate size, okay? So I know based on the information the breeder has given me a range of what this dog's neck is gonna be. When you put this collar on your dog for the first time, they might have never been wear, worn a collar at all in the past. So this could be the first time the dog has actually worn a collar. Um, and if that's the case, they might scratch at it a little bit. They might be weirded out and shake their head a little bit. But either way, I want this to be snug because if for some reason you have to grab a hold of this collar and you actually have to use it to manage the dog and, and control the dog, if it's really loose, and it slides over the dog's ears and head, boop, dog, airport, situation that nobody wants to deal with, okay? So just be smart about making this a little snug. It doesn't have to be choking the dog, but if it can slide over the ears, snug it up, make it a little tighter, okay? The other thing, a little disinfectant. 
a little hard to come by nowadays, but you're gonna need some because if for some reason that dog potties his kennel, you're gonna wanna clean it up. Would the airport have some? Possibly, but you don't wanna be that person who's bothering the airport employees for cleanup material, okay? So with the disinfectant, grab some towels, bring a couple of towels. I'm a huge believer in having a bin in my house that is just designated to my dogs. So I go to a Walmart type store, pick up kind of an, a funky color towel, like a purple maybe, that I just use for my dogs and I keep it in that bin. So take a couple of those towels, use those towels if you need to clean up. You can also use one of those towels to replace the blanket that might have been used by your breeder to send that dog uh, across the country or to, or to you. So a lot of times they bring a blanket uh, or they'll send a blanket. That blanket can be replaced with one of the cleaner towels if for some reason it's soiled. Um, and the other big thing, couple of things. One, don't forget your ID, okay? If you're picking up a dog from the airport, you have to prove that you are the person that's supposed to be receiving this dog. So make sure you bring your wallet with your ID, okay? And the final tip is to bring a pair of wire cutters. Why? Because a lot of times these crates are zip tied. And if they're zip tied, you're gonna have to unclip them in order to get the puppy out and take care of the puppy. So go through those items again, put them on a checklist, make sure you put them in your car a couple of hours before you leave, be prepared so you can actually enjoy spending time with your puppy. Being prepared in any situation in life, especially nowadays as everybody's knowing, <laughs> takes a lot of stress off of you. So if you can be two steps ahead of this situation, it's really going to make a difference in the first time the puppy meets you. You're not going to be stressed. You're not going to be showing signs of anger because you're not prepared. The dog's a mess. These are the things that you should anticipate. And if you don't need them, guess what? Great. But if you do, like I said, it's going to make the experience a lot nicer. So we really want to have fun at this moment. The first time we meet our dog is such a great time and we never get a second chance to make this first impression with them. So I want you to have fun, but I want you to be prepared and keep watching for more tips. We're gonna put some videos of Stryker actually um, arriving at the airport, us spending time with him, and really the trials and tribulations of dealing with a puppy, puppy train or potty training, crate training, leash training, all the things that are really important to make yourself a better owner and have a better relationship with your dog. So have fun and keep in touch.